In this video, I will show you how to install Ubuntu 24.04 on a persistent USB drive. We will use a single USB drive and install full Ubuntu on it. And we will use something that I'm very excited about and that's the ZFS file system, which we will use for the Ubuntu root partition. I will try to present in the most straightforward way possible, but if for some reason this tutorial doesn't work for you, then I'm really sorry. Maybe you can try out one of my previous Linux installation videos. You can find the links down in the description. Now, before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. As said, all the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I am now here on the official Ubuntu page. At the time of recording, Ubuntu 24.04 is the latest LTS release. Nowadays, you can run Ubuntu basically anywhere. You can run it as a desktop, on a server, as a cloud instance, on Windows WSL, in a Docker container, or even on a mobile device if you really want to. In this video, we will go with the desktop version. First, we need to download the ISO image. So let's go to Download Ubuntu Desktop. And here is the download button. Now wait for the download. It has 5.7 gigabytes. Download complete. And here is the image. This is now the ISO image with the live environment with the installer. And first we need to flash this one on a USB drive. In this video, we will use a single USB drive and this one should be a more faster one. So it should have a decent read write speed. Otherwise the whole system will be very slow and you will get really frustrated. And it doesn't matter if you have the newest machine, if the USB drive with this operating system is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive. I'm using one with 128 gigabytes and you can find the referral link down in the description. This is not the only ISO inside my downloads folder. There is also PeroS Big Sur. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install a macOS lookalike named PeroS on a USB drive. So if you want to run a macOS-like Linux distro from a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now let's flash Ubuntu on a USB drive and therefore I will use a tool called Rufus. This is Rufus, the official website. When I install Linux, I always use this one. So let's scroll down. Here is the download link. Download complete. Let's open it. And here it is. Now plug in the USB drive. I will do it as well. Rufus has recognized the drive. Now let's select the ISO. Here it is. Open. Leave everything else on default and select start. ISO image mode is okay. Now it warns us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have something important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue. And now let's wait. Finished, close. The USB drive with this ISO is ready and now we need to boot into it. I will assume that you know how to boot from a USB drive, but if you don't, you plug in the USB drive, you restart the system, and while the system is restarting, you press one of the function keys. Usually it's F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer. Then you should get the boot menu and inside the menu, select the USB drive and it should open the grub bootloader. Before we boot into this live environment, we first need to change some settings inside grub. Now I will restart my machine as well and boot into grub. Here I am inside the grub bootloader. Now inside this menu, make sure that try or install Ubuntu is selected and press E. Now here, use the arrow keys and move the cursor between quiet and splash. Now press space and write to RAM. This will now load the whole image into memory. So make sure that you're doing this on a machine with enough RAM memory. Otherwise it may not boot or afterwards it may crash. I'm using a machine with 16 gigabytes of RAM and you should use at least eight gigabytes of RAM if you want this to work. So with that said, let's press F10 and let's boot into Ubuntu. 
And here we are. This is now the Ubuntu Live environment. It's not the full Ubuntu, it is just the live environment with the installer. And since this one is running entirely from RAM, we can also plug out the USB drive. So let's plug it out and plug it back in. This will unmount all partitions from the USB drive. And now we can install Ubuntu. I will just go with the defaults, so English is OK. Accessibility, everything is OK. Keyboard, also OK. I will use the offline installer. I will not connect to the internet. And next, I want to install Ubuntu. Interactive installation is OK. I want the default selection of apps. And I also want to install third-party software. Now here, choose Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu. And under Advanced Features, I will use ZFS, which is at the time of recording still experimental. The ZFS file system is kind of like the BTRFS file system. And I really like how simple it is on ZFS to roll back changes. I had really good experience with ZFS on FreeBSD, which is a different open source Unix operating system like Linux. So I'm really excited to see ZFS here as an option on Ubuntu. This is OK. And next. Now here, make sure to select your USB drive. In my case, this is the one. Now add your username. Time zone, I will pick a random one. Now here you can see a summary what will be done and install. Now this can take some time. Perfect, installation completed. Now we need to restart and boot into Ubuntu. So again, you will need to open the boot menu and select the USB drive. This time you don't need to change boot settings, just boot directly to Ubuntu. I will do the same on my machine as well and I'll see you after the reboot. And here we are. This is now full Ubuntu 24.04 running from a USB drive. We also got the welcome screen. Let's click this away. If you want, you can also use Ubuntu Pro, which is free, up to five machines. In a previous video, I showed you the benefits of Ubuntu Pro and how to set it up. So if you're interested, you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. For now, I will skip it. Share data, I don't want that. And finish. Now let's see what we have. Press super and write terminal. Here it is. I will also connect to the internet. And now let's do sudo apt update. And let's update the system. sudo apt upgrade. Upgrade everything. It's always good to update the system after a new installation because the offline installer could be a few months old. Perfect, we are up to date. I will restart later. And now let's do sudo apt install neofetch. Yes. And now let's do neofetch. I still use neofetch on Ubuntu because it's the easiest to install. So let's run it. So this is Ubuntu 20.04, the LTS release. It's running the 6.8 generic kernel. The desktop environment is GNOME 46. And this one is now using a bit more than 4 gigabytes. Well, this is probably because I updated the system, but after a cold boot, you should get about 2 gigabytes. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. In this video, I showed you how you can run the Ubuntu Live environment from RAM only, which is nice, but did you know that you can also run the full Ubuntu entirely from RAM? In a previous video, I showed you how you can run the full Ubuntu desktop from RAM only. So if you want to run Ubuntu with no hard drive latency yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.